I feel like cousin it right now. Or no, I feel like the girl from the ring. I'm Melissa Case. I've been sewing historically inspired costumes for nearly a decade, but I'm still pretty new to the 18th century. With my limited experience, I'm going to test out three recipes and a hairstyle from American Duchess's Guide to 18th Century Beauty. Just remember, this is a review, not a tutorial, because... I might not be doing this right. To start off, let's get dressed. The first layer is a plain shift. These were typically made of linen, but mine is made of cotton. Next, I wear an under petticoat, which will help give the skirt a little more structure. Next is stockings, which I bought from American Duchess. I just use cross grain ribbon for garters, but I would recommend researching something a little more substantial. Time for shoes. I chose American Duchess's Dunmore's. I swear this video is not sponsored by American Duchess. I just love these shoes. You may have recognized this undergarment set. For those who don't recognize it, this is the same set I made during my 18th century undergarment sew along video series where I show you how to make a shift, an under petticoat, stays, and side hoops. It's on YouTube and completely free, and I even provide a link to the pattern I used. I'll put a link to the playlist in my description in case you're interested. I know these straps look a little weird, but they really help your posture. Now before I can show you how I made the hairstyle, I need to make the hair cushion. To make the hair cushion, you need the beauty book for instructions on the pattern, wool knit fabric that is close to your hair color, scissors, a pencil, thread that matches the fabric, pattern paper or wrapping paper with a gridded back, and something to stuff the cushion with. They suggest horsehair, granulated cork, or wool roving. I used the fluff from an old pillow. I was worried it would deflate under the weight of my hair, but it satisfied me. Speaking of satisfied, have any of you watched Hamilton yet? I'm on my third rewatch and I am loving it. I feel like I notice a dozen new details every time I watch it. If you've seen it, let me know what your favorite song or moment from the show is in the comments. Evan's favorite is You'll Be Back. I'll say mine is satisfied whenever I'm asked, but in reality, my favorite is whichever one I happen to be watching at the time. I just really love the show. Okay, focus Mel, hair cushion. The instructions were very easy to follow and it was a pretty quick project. I ended up completing it in a single afternoon. I didn't adjust the pattern at all and I was pretty pleased with the proportions. I'm not going to repeat the step-by-step -step instructions here because I want to encourage you to buy the book. Instead, I'm going to answer a question I had on the hair powder video. I was asked what was the purpose of the hair powder, especially since washing the hair would seem like a better option. Let's talk purpose first. The pomade and powder together add volume to the hair, which, as you'll see, is essential for the crazy hairstyles of this time period. Like modern hair care products, the pomadome helps nourish and condition your hair. The clove and the other spices also repel bugs and other pests. There's also a factor of ease, since if you're styling your hair the same way every day, your hair tends to remember the style. Case in point, the part in my hair that I'm always fighting with. Abby Cox pomade and powdered her hair for almost an entire year and only had to reapply it at minimum every two weeks. And she found that her hair was pretty quick to style. Washing hair is definitely easier now, but they were living in a time where there was no running water. They also weren't able to control the temperature of their homes the way we can. Even if I had a fire going, I wouldn't love the idea of dealing with a lot of wet hair in January for longer than it takes for me to walk to my car. Okay, cushion is done. Let's move on to the styling. My dad's probably gonna watch this. All right, welcome back. This time we're in my bedroom. So I feel like you're getting kind of a full house tour during these review videos. So my plan for this video is to attempt the ski alpine hairstyle featured in the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty. I already made my hair cushion. I am not a hairstylist at all. So this is going to be interesting. Man, my hair just always wants to part, doesn't it? So my hair is pomade and powdered as you would have seen in my previous video. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do. I'll leave the link in the description. For now, here we go. I'm actually going to start off right off the bat by deviating away from the instructions because I watched a video of them doing this hairstyle and they made like a little anchor for the hair cushion to stick to. 
So I am going to actually do that first. So let's see, hair off the top of the scalp. I'm going to make it into a braid and then just kind of coil it onto itself into a little button. So let's see. I feel like cousin it right now. Or no, I feel like the girl from the ring. I feel like I'm not going to do that many hair tutorials. I feel like this is not my area. But I figured if I was going to review what's in the book, I might as well cover everything. Alright, there we go. Alright, so we're just going to make a little coil here. It's hot in there. Alright, so now I get to pin this to it. So, the wire bit is in the back, so it's going to sit just like this, which doesn't look weird or awkward at all. I'm already struggling. There we go. Alright. Alright. So now I'm going to take the hair from the right and the front. Now this is going to go right up. Right. Alright. So we're getting there. Alright, so then it looks like I just keep doing this all the way around the front. So up. Okay, I think so far so good, right? How far around do I go? Okay, so then since I have to separate the back hair into two sections. Alright, so I'm gonna take the lower half here. I'm going to rubber band this so that I don't use it. Just wanna remind everybody that this is a review, not a tutorial, so uh, I might not be doing this right. I hope I am, but I might not be. So, don't copy me, because I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, this part isn't comfortable on my arms. I feel like I'm running out of room in this cushion. Okay, I think I'm on the last piece. How exciting. <laughs> I look like one of those wigs at Amadeus. <laughs> Alright, so now it says to take all the excess hair, coil it up, and tuck it into the hole. I don't think I can get anything else into this hole. So I might just kind of plop it on top. It's getting covered with a cap anyway. <laughs> All right. Look at these bits, but I don't think I can do too much about that. That's just my hair. I feel like I'm lopsided. All right. Okay, now for the back parts. I guess for the sake of trying, I should probably use the buckles as well. In the book, the buckles are already done. They're pre-made, but you can try one or two, right? Nothing weird or awkward about this. I 
this way, you know? I can't quit you to that. Good enough, right? All this is hair cushion showing. I'm just doing one of these because I'm already tired. Alright, so I have my knitting needle here that they recommend using. Am I supposed to roll up or down? Like I'm supposed to roll down? I think it really doesn't matter at this point. That's looking alright. I mean, I'm a small side, but I can deal with that. All I want this to do is when we actually start pinning it before I even take this thing off. I can't see it. Ah, I missed a strand. I'm just going to pin it up because no. I just noticed my mic isn't plugged in. Whoops. Okay, now I'm blurry. There we go. Now, all in all, this has been a fairly easy hairstyle so far. I say so far. I'm almost done. Last couple hairpins. All right. These are just how my hair grows. I can't help that. I can possibly try to smooth them up with pomade, but I feel like even that's going to just be fertile. So I'm just going to slide them to the back and hope for the best. I hope I did okay, because I can't fully see all the way around my head. Honestly, that was pretty easy. It took less than a half hour. And it looks pretty right. So it says to do a little bit of pomade and get any flyaways to stick to the hair, which is good because I do have flyaways. But that's also just how my hair is, so I might only be able to do so much. Oh, it did stick up. Let's try this bit then. Let's see. There we go. Eh, one yellow stubborn piece. Get up there. Stay. That actually worked. I never should have doubted them. Alright, so just a bit of powder left. Which I'm going to do in the bathroom because. No. Powdering my hair made this come back. So, a little bit more pomade, I guess. Mm. Alright, that just is what it is. Ooh. One more thing. Got my cap here, which will cover this ugly mess up here. You won't really be able to see this, but I kind of secure my cap with tiny straight pins. Directly to my hair, which is how it kind of stays on throughout the wind and fun stuff. Alright, here we go. While the beauty book does include patterns and instructions for caps, this particular cap was made using a pattern from American Duchess's first book, The Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. The gown I wear at the end of this video was also made using that book. This little piece of hair is going to be the bane of my existence. I'm just going to pin it. Up under the cap where nobody will be able to see that it looks weird. Alright, so that was pretty easy. I love how tall my hair is. It actually goes right up to here, which feels incredible. You're probably wondering how this hairstyle held up. We went to an event at the Museum of the American Revolution pre-quarantine. It was a pretty windy night and there was a bit of dancing. It was a good time and my hair held up pretty well. I would definitely recommend this hairstyle but maybe have someone help you with the back. Now for the big question. How do you get this stuff out? It's actually simpler than you would think. First, you shampoo your hair while it's dry. Then you hop into the shower, rinse it out, and after that, you shampoo and condition again as normal. 
The smell of clove might linger a bit, but your hair is going to feel fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this review. Any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you're not subscribed to my channel, now is the time to do so because I'll be reviewing the rouge in my next video. I'll see you next time. Bye.